Ryan's Mobile One. I got another Subaru question the other day, and that was, I took out the engine and the torque converter and everything came with it, but I can't get it back together, and how do I do that? I said, first of all, uh, we came to the right place. You should definitely take that off and put it on separately. Uh, torque converters are basically like the clutch for an automatic transmission so that they can transfer fluid power from the engine crankshaft to the transmission. Transmission's got a front pump on it and it turns around or whatever, but what's turning the front pump? The torque converter. Uh, what allows it to be able to sit there and idle without stalling the torque converter. Torque converter's got a lot of important jobs, so it's got a lot of shafts and a lot of different things that poke from one bit to the other. And the way that you separate an engine and transmission like I'm about to do with this, because the head bolt got ripped out of the threads and we got to do the special kit on it. The way you do it is you just turn the crankshaft and look through this little window right here. There'll be a black plug with a little bit that you can grab it here. This one's long since gone because this poor engine and car has been trashed so many times in ways. But you just rotate it and then lo and behold, dun 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 dun, there's your bolt. And on this one, I believe there is four of them. There's one there, 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 and there. And you just buzz them out. See the rusty bit back up in there? That is the torque converter. And this part right here that's connecting is the flex plate. Flex plate bolts to the engine, and then the flex plate bolts to the torque converter. Torque converter slides over the input shaft. I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. I find that if I hold it on the socket like this, it doesn't fall back in there. It'll, I'm going there anyway, so that's no big deal, but otherwise you can pick it up at the bottom, but you gotta pull off the inspection pan. Pan tray, patran, something along those lines. A simple little easy step can save you so much grief and expense of busting your torque converter. But it makes the engine a lot easier to pull. You don't have to, I mean on a Subaru you got those long bottom studs you got to mess with. But on most every other engine, Subaru or not, disconnecting this makes it so that you don't have to pull it as far forward. So, oh my gosh, it's stabbing this thing so much easier. That's what they call it because the input shaft stabs into the torque converter. It's way easier to stab. You pull four bolts and what have you got? Spinny, spinny, Yaru. I don't know if you can see that, but what's behind that is not moving. Let's put a paint mark on it. Let's make this easy to see. See that yellow mark on there? Watch this. Now you see it, now you don't. Now you see it, now you don't. Now you see it. So here's my secret that I used to get all the bolts off. This Subaru is from back east, so it was a little rusty. Had to use some penetrant on it. I use an S wrench, the 14 side. Uh, 14 Harbor Freight just stubby wrenches, these ratchets, <laughs> pry bar, and I used the sledgehammer too, hitting some of these. But anyway, we got all those out. You've got four per side, you got a nut at the bottom, don't miss that. You got these three bolts, and then on the starter, we got that nut. Another tool that I use, you wouldn't expect, I use a Stanley Boss Stitch, inch and a quarter chisel. I just basically get it nice and sharp. Get it in there, wackety schmackety. I spray the penetrating lubricant in here and on each of the fasteners coming off. And when you do all of that, I do chew this thing up a little bit. Let me see if I can find a chew mark on this to show you. See, this one has a little bit of a chew mark right there. This one was really stuck because that was rusted on. That would have taken forever to wiggle off. So I just whack it and bam, it's off. So when I get it to this point, I lower this down so I can work from the top. You can see a couple little chew marks here. Just this little guys. Somebody wailed on it with a hammer at some point. The chisel beats the crap out of doing that because you get it just exactly where you want it and that's it. Okay, so I grab the water outlet. I'll grab a cylinder or whatever else I can grab a hold of. This bracket right here, I'm not sure if that's in flame. <laughs> flame. In frame. I firm. She's 1070. Came off a Nissan Murano when I did the trailer hitch on it. This was an exhaust bracket. Use what you got, put it in there. If you have to put the uh, bracket from the AC back on, do it. And then I'm just using the normal hanger on this side. So I just get it to wiggle, pull it back. And you can see the little nub right there, the centering cone. It's kind of like a pilot. 
that's what is uh, holding everything center. So you don't want to put any weight on this unless you absolutely have to. And guess what? You don't really have to very much. Got to be careful if it swings forward. Uh, it can hit the radiator. So I'm going to get my hand on it and my forearm against the radiator support. I'm trying to not torque it. Torque converter. There we go. Well, that's advantageous for draining. This is my first time trying this chain in this configuration. Normally I don't use the hook, I use a bolt through it. Whatever. These engines are so light. Alright, main attraction. Moment of truth, let's get you in there and take a look at this torque converter. So again, this is the flex plate. You want to put lubrication on this. Oftentimes there's a bearing or something or a bushing in this case. And then these bolts are the ones that we saw through the window. And as I said before, there's four of them. We've got them sitting up here to be safe. This is my car so I can be as messy as I want to be and take as long as I want. And boy, have I ever. When you pull this out, you're going to leak transmission fluid. I'm going to do that to show you guys. Uh, but whenever you do a transmission flush, unless it's running, and then this is uh, being cycled through or pressured through, you can't get all of the transmission fluid out just dropping the pan because a lot of it gets hung up at here because it only goes in or out through the front part where it goes into the front pump, the front pump seal they call it, aptly named, huh? So you can see that there's a ring gear for your starter. It's right through here. We pulled the starter back here. We don't have a battery in here. We made room for our AC compressor here. But just pull a starter back through there. And basically this ring accommodates for what you need to get your uh, flex plate. I don't know why exactly they call it a flex plate, but it's pretty musical. If you have a scrap one, kind of fun. Show-offs. What are we going to do? You see this just kind of moves freely. You can move this if you want to position. You can see my paint marks still in the same place. Yeah, we'll pull that off and we'll show you the shaft and uh, show you the torque converter side. It's not as dirty as it sounds. Going forward, here's the deal. Just to be clear. So we must be clear. Clear, clear, clear. And, and so I want to be very clear here. Now let me be clear. Clear. I also want to be clear about what we will not be doing. We typically will not be removing the torque converter. You want to leave that inside the transmission, and that way there's no contamination with fluid or anything else. And you won't mess up all of the splines and all the clips and all the other kind of stuff. I'm going to take it out just to show you guys that you don't want to mess with it. That's all. You know, usually if you get a wrecking yard transmission, it comes with the torque converter. It's all kept together, wired together. I've showed that in some other vehicles that I've done videos on vehicle transmission swaps or whatever so anyway this is like a look behind the green curtain or whatever you just want to leave that in there and not mess with it okay all right just want to be clear as it turns out this has a front pump drive that sticks way back in there that actually slides out and there's a little clip that you got to pinch there's two tangs one on each side you need to rotate it until you locate that and then pinch it and slide it in or you can just drag the whole thing out but pinching that clips the way to go now that we've had a look see at it from the front go ahead and show you from the side how I pull this out there's a little bit of room to grab here a little bit here a little bit on the bottom so I'll grab through the starter hole and through the inspection and just slide it right out yeah there's a c-clip on it there it is let's set it on the ground so you can really get a look at it see all that is is that's a sleeve for the front pump drive can we take that all the way out should we take that all the way out So you've got the bushing, you see the little lines in it that help with lubrication and keeping it from leaking. And then those two things on each side of it are for the drive. And then these drive the front pump. In this case, the front pump's further back in the transmission for it to be designed like that. Pretty cool. So this just sits clear back up in there. But you see how it's got a seal here for pressure. And then there's a shaft here and a shaft here. But you're usually about three layers deep, and this is no exception. The transmission seal, the input shaft seal, it actually seals on the torque converter itself. So you got to put that together, take it apart at that point. 
So you don't want to have a bunch of weight and pressure on the on this shaft here if you were to bend this. As you can imagine, you'd have all kinds of headaches and problems. Uh, but it's got a, another seal inside the torque converter that it seals up on. So this is what we were fighting against, and you can see it's got this little thing sticking out. And you see all the different layers that go all the way down in there, all the different splines. This thing's got a really long shaft. Pretty crazy design. You could have it stabbed through uh, the first layer, and then the second layer, and then not go to the third. Uh, and so then you got to rotate it and twist it until it does go. But usually it's the front pump that you hang up on in getting these to stab in. Usually it's contained clear back in there, and that clips the stuff. So something to be aware of. If you had to, I guess you could get a magnet and pull it back out. But the best thing in the world to do, pull these bolts out and just leave this where it is. Fortunately for me, the Subaru engineer sloped this just a little bit in each direction. And so that little circlip is fine. I got that back together with no problem at all. So I just need to line these up. I need to rotate it until these fall into the front pump drive and we'll be good. But fortunately this does come off so that I was able to show you the innards because man, that's a lot of tube to see through. But you see what I'm saying, this flat spot right here? And then there's another one on the bottom side that help you to, that basically drive your front pump. And this is all tapered, and so that works great. You can see where the seal rides right here, where it's really polished. That's where your front pump seal is, so it goes clear up in there. Make sure that's good and clean. Maybe you have a little lubricant and send her in. Can you imagine trying to stab an engine through all of that and how long that is? Wouldn't be able to do it. I'm saying it's hard enough leaning over getting this in there. It's a pretty heavy piece of equipment. Really want to support the weight so that you're not slide hammering this in there. Twist it when you get to a seal. Make sure everything's nice and happy. So you can see I hang up right here. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and spin again. So you could be spinning uh, both faces of it. So you gotta have it back far enough or even just kind of stab test it like this. Or just mark it how it came off. All good ideas. That's just a killer because you don't wanna be bent over any more than you have to. Back muscles, right? There's something went clunk. rotating that clockwise. So what happens if you don't get it all the way in where it's supposed to be and it's sticking out like this and then you bolt up the engine and just force it? Well, if things don't line up, those uh, it'll work like a screw clamp. It'll just smash or break whatever's in the inside of this transmission. You don't want that. Anybody, <laughs> you don't have time and money for that if you're working on your own stuff. Let's put it that way. Just got to be careful and play with it. Looks like spinning that fast was the ticket this time. Everything feels solid and we're back where we belong. Thanks for asking the question about the torque converter. When I read that, I was kind of like, ah, don't do <laughs> Leave the torque converter alone. You're a lot better off. You don't have to monkey with it. Less risk of damage. Just pull the bolts out where you're supposed to. I didn't even have to look. I knew about the cover and was able to explain. He's like, that's awesome. Thank you. That's great. And then I felt good. <laughs> when I started doing YouTube videos, I did it because I wanted to help people out. I'm still in that same boat. It makes me feel good. There's something in me that I, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but basically I feel like crap and I don't feel good about myself unless I'm helping or contributing. And then that outside feedback for whatever reason makes me feel amazing. Uh, I've done a lot of stuff as far as emotional intelligence to try to have my own supply of fuel so I feel good as it is. If I get out in nature and go hiking and whatnot, I feel great. Um, but if I'm cooped up, quarantine, whatever kind of stuff, eh, it really comes back and bites me in the butt. I'm like, apparently I'm not fixed yet. <laughs> so I'm a work in progress. Uh, just like a lot of the things that I work on. So I just try to improve that as I go. One of the ways that I do that is being of service to other people. So thank you for giving me that opportunity to do that. It makes me feel good. So uh, if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to click subscribe, hit the bell. And I'd uh, love to help you out with another project. I've got over a thousand videos. I've been doing this since 2008. 
long and the short of it, I'm glad you're here. Love you guys, love your support, and uh, really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end. This post office box has been crooked for about a month and a half. Goal is to not tip it over, just make it straight again. Somebody hit it with a car. It might be out, there we go, that's all you need. Done, straight. Now it just needs some rain to get it level. These good puppers. This mountain has all kinds of cool rocks on it. These are sedimentary rocks that have been laid flat and then pushed up and then broke up when uh, convergent plates came together and shoved them up. Found some fossils at the top that are of eggs that were trapped in mud. Let's keep pushing down on the world. The world keeps pushing me up. I think that one's fun the way it just kind of points off into oblivion. I got it to where I shimmed it so that everything's pretty solid. Nothing rocks. This is all keyed in. <laughs> this one's got a curve on the underside of it that matches the curve of that rock. So it's pretty solid. I like it. <laughs> I think we're close to where she likes to nest. She keeps swooping us. It's kind of fun. Awesome, those are firefighters.